Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning into Living in Sarasota Luxury. We are going to be talking about insurance. This is a really important topic. And if you're looking to buy property in Florida, it is something that's probably top of mind with everything that's going on in the uh, Florida insurance market. So I am here with Omar Calderon. He is part of uh, Caleri Risk Management. This is his own firm. And he has been my own personal um, agent for both investment, business, and personal properties. And I just think he's amazing. So wanted to have him here to share all of his valuable insights and answer a lot of the typical questions that I'm getting from many people. So thank you, Omar, for being here. With that said, um, we were just talking about flood insurance. This is kind of a complicated uh, topic for a lot of people. And for those that may not live near a body of water, uh, they don't really think it's necessary until you move to Florida. So kind of walk us through the purpose of flood insurance, um, you know, what you're seeing in that in that world, and what can someone expect from having an insurance policy and the coverages and essentially what it what does it cover <laughs> besides flood, <what>, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you for having me, Mariah. It's thank a pleasure. You. Um, you know, anytime that uh, you know, we we get a chance to really Talk about the insurance. Us guys, you know, in the yeah. we, we get excited because nobody oh, really yeah. needs to talk sometimes about insurance. <laughs> it's not the most it. fun topic, right? Let's That's be real. Right. <laughs> it's, it, it's a necessary evil. We want to make sure we provide our clients with the most right. up-to-date information, um, basically to protect their property so that they can make an informative decision. The one thing and the first thing that I talk to our clients about is homeowners completely carves out flood insurance. Flood insurance, in its definition, is damage of water stemming from a large body of water. One of the mm -hmm. examples that I always provide our clients, something that they may not think about, is, for example, an above-the-ground pool that you mm -hmm. have or your neighbor have, and it takes, you know, a thousand gallons of water, it ruptures, and it goes into your property, and it damages, it rushes mm -hmm. into your property. Mm -hmm. That would be considered a flood, and people don't think about mm -hmm. that because you're not in the flood zone. So those mm -hmm. instances, and again, obviously, you know that may not happen all the time, but it's a good way to kind of think about flooding. That is not mm -hmm. just necessarily when you're in, you know, by the ocean or by yeah. the lake. It's, it really becomes an issue of the type of water and the size of the water, the amount, the volume and how it's being rushed into your home to obviously mm -hmm. uh, cause damage. Homeowners, it completely comes out the um, coverage for flood. Uh, okay. Now, when you're going into a process of buying a home, we talked about this before, and you're wondering whether or not that property will fall, especially now we're talking about Florida, we will fall under a flood zone. One of the easiest way to do it is speak to your broker and see if they could provide you with a um, flood determination. A lot of the okay. flood, a lot of the private flood programs um, carriers they provide us just by entering an address, uh, John Smith, address one two three Main Street, Sarasota, Florida. It'll provide us with a uh, flood determination that gives us an idea of where the flood zone or what flood zone, flood zone is. And we can also quote that to get a roundabout or ballpark you know, uh, idea of what that premium is going to cost you before you go into a contract to buy the mm -hmm. home. Yeah. So the mortgage or the bank will require, once you're on the contract, to get an elevation uh, certificate on the property. Okay. That elevation certificate will actually provide you with the most detail um, information on your particular property, how mm -hmm. high, how many steps do you have from the front door to the elevation or to, to obviously your driveway? Mm -hmm. uh, do you have an enclosure around with openings so that the water can fall, you know, flow through? Mm -hmm. All these details that will make an impact on your premium. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. it's very hard to say or ballpark the amount of premium you will pay. But there are ways mm -hmm. that we could at least get an idea when you're going through a process of buying a home to see how, you know, we can provide you as much information as possible, you know, so that you are able to make that decision to go into a contract 
for that particular property. Okay, that's really helpful. So a lot of people have been reading about you know, a lot of carriers leaving the Florida market. Um, we recently, you know, last year we had Hurricane Ian, and I think everyone suspected that that would potentially increase the rates of flood because areas that never saw flooding all of a sudden were flooding, um, you know, near Manatee River and things like that. So talk to us about what has changed, you know, with FEMA over the past, you know, three to four years and what you kind of expect happening in the future over the coming years. Absolutely. As it relates uh, to flood. Great question. Um, I think that FEMA, for all the hard work, obviously, that they have to do, because there are, you know, when there is a disaster, obviously, they have, it's a, it's a federal uh, it's, a, it's a government uh, entity that obviously it's there to help at the worst time um, and handle those catastrophes. The problem with that is that any every time that we've seen a, a, a very big event, uh, I'll give an example is Hurricane Sandy uh, up north. Okay, Hurricane Sandy took that area by surprise, you know, in a lot of places that they weren't, they never flooded. And it was just kept on rotting, raining and raining and raining. The water just didn't have anywhere to go and it ended up flooding a lot of places, right? Mm -hmm. FEMA then went in there, helped out homeowners that didn't have obviously uh, flood insurance. But what ended up happening when they do that is they also start assessing the, the actual plain field, the, uh, the the level of the ground, new construction or current construction and how that changes. But it takes so long for them to actually get to a point where they know that, yes, this is going to be in a flood zone, that unfortunately, during that time, it creates a really tough time for a lot of clients because it'll force them to have flood insurance. Especially mm -hmm. And so my point with that is, FEMA, for the, you know, in, from my experience in the last 15 years, have always been almost behind behind the curve in essence, right? They'll come in and they're like, oh, you know, this place got flooded, never flooded before. Now we got to make some changes in, it, right? But the damage was already done. Uh, FEMA is not necessarily the quickest way to get coverage or the, the quickest mm -hmm. way to get some benefit, which is the reason why, obviously, uh, you know, there have been many not have the ability to do anything to their home and they may have to obviously leave their homes as damaged yeah. as, they, as they are. So it, it is a very tough situation when it comes down to FEMA, but overall, I think that they've, from what they've seen in, for example, in different states, I think they're becoming more aware that, you know, they need to be updating their zones or flood zones and yeah. looking at the, the new builds. A lot of folks don't, don't realize that when they're putting up a Walmart, you know, uh, a mile away from you, that is going to change where the water, you know, goes, you know, the, the floodplain sure. is not the same anymore. So, yes, of course, mm. we want to see um, communities being, um, you know, expansion and we want to see the that Costco, you know, 15 minutes away. Yeah. But that does create a disruption, especially mm -hmm. with water. That people don't think about, uh, right? Interesting. Yeah, yeah absolutely. never would have thought about that. Absolutely. So one of the things that you know with Ian we we saw was that there was places in Central Florida that never flooded, but now they did. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it and you kind of take a step back, there's been so much building, so much so much expansion that of course there had to be some changes in how water will try to find its way to, you know, the, the sewers, the, you know, the drains as opposed to homes. And so yeah. what I see is going to be continue to happen with FEMA is they will take into account, I think, hopefully, I'm hopeful that they will take into account sooner, be more proactive with obviously the expansion that we're seeing in many states, you know, mm -hmm. Texas, the same yeah. thing, you know, uh, Florida, of course. And so that would help at least to try when we're inputting information in our systems, right? That we get the most accurate information to provide a decline and know that mm -hmm. look, you need this coverage because now this has changed from the last five years. Um, yeah, 
do they change it every five years? Is that typical or there's really no rhyme? Yeah, Cause I know they really, recently changed the flood, the flood plains for our area. I think it was two or three years ago now. Um, yeah, there is, there really isn't any sort of like, you know, every five years, what we've seen, unfortunately is, you know, what we talked about before is after an event. Now they've come to realize, hold on a second, there was a major event there. We really need to go in there and figure out what the uh, floodplain is and make those determinations so that people can obviously cover themselves properly. Um, and then you will also, because of that, you will also have homes that will never get flooded, but now they fell into a flood zone because of a, an event and they'll have to pay yeah. some higher premium. So it's, it's really, uh, yeah. you know, a tough situation when it comes to, to flood. Yeah, definitely. So talk to us about um, citizens and for those that might not know what citizens is and the changes that are coming our way, it seems. Absolutely. So citizens property insurance is run by Florida, by, by the government of Florida. It is what we consider the last resort, the last option. You get, for example, two, three claims in a year. It could be a water claim. It could be fire. It could be you know, many different claims that you had to obviously use your insurance and they paid out and now you don't qualify for a standard company such as State Farm, mm -hmm. such as, you know, uh, AIG or Cincinnati. You don't qualify mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, the insurance company is looking at your risk profile uh, as a also as a client or, or business. Correct. I mean, I always tell yeah. my clients is they are in the business of being profitable. And so when they sure. look at our, our my individual risk for my home, and they say, well, Omar had, you know, three claims within a year. You know, uh, there was a robbery two times and there was a flood. They'll start looking at that. And some companies will say, well, Omar, you know what? We could offer you a homeowner's policy, but it will be three times the amount you were paying. So in essence, it's mm -hmm. they're saying that they don't want to take on my risk. Correct. Yeah. And so citizens was in essence. Up so that no one would be owned. That would be the last stop, the, the sort of the, the, the last defense for someone that had claims and they couldn't get standard companies to insure them or at least in a, in a good rate uh, or with a good rate. And so citizens will do more insurance. To, now, what's, what's been happening in the last three years is that citizens have now become the largest insurer in Florida. And that's mm -hmm. not good because mm -hmm. they are backed by the government, meaning that they don't actually have the liquidity or the mm -hmm. uh, reserves to actually pay out the claims. If all their clients mm -hmm. right now would have a catastrophe and claim, they would just will not be able to pay it. And obviously, it'll fall back on the government and then fall back on FEMA. And obviously, mm -hmm. that would be a huge problem. Mm -hmm. And so... Right. They're increasing rates as of late because of the amount of risk that they've taken on because of companies. Mm -hmm. There's two things that have been happening with companies. One is some companies have said, we can no longer run a profitable business in Florida or in other states. Uh, it has happened in, in many other states. And they decide to either close business or mm -hmm. completely get out of Florida and run insurance in, in other places. That's the one thing. Number two is current carriers that are here, for example, Chubb, Cincinnati, and AIG have now tightened their guidelines for underwriting. And they'll have these five boxes where they'll say, we'll insure your home, but you got to fit these five boxes. And what that mm -hmm. does is it knocks out a lot of the middle of, of the road homeowner and they can't mm -hmm. get an insurance policy and they end up only having to get citizens. And because citizens are is, is taking so much risk, they need to up their premiums so that they're able mm -hmm. to pay out claims. So it's a domino mm -hmm. effect that had uh, basically has been happening for the last few years. Now, from my understanding and on our conversations in the industry, I think it's going to be getting better. I think we've seen the worst of it. I think in the next year or two, I think we're going to start seeing um, basically companies opening up a little more, okay, and yeah. allowing obviously clients to to get better competitive rates. Now, mm -hmm. one of the things that also caused the some of the carriers to tighten underwriting guidelines as well as 
just, you know, not insure in Florida, uh, period, is because in December, one of your questions that you had was mm -hmm. in regards of the meeting that they had in December with the Senate. Yeah. And, and basically yeah. what they did and, and, and the governor here, they what, what they what their goal was with that meeting is to really emphasize on holding insurance companies accountable. And that means more reinsurance, which is a a better term for reinsurance is a backing from another company. Usually it's an overseas company. Okay. So if it's like a Lloyd's okay. of London and they want to invest in property insurance in Florida, they go through like a travelers or like to say like, like a chub. Okay. And they'll say, mm -hmm. listen, we'll we'll take a million dollars in risk. So if you have ten million dollars in risk, we'll take one million. And but we own those policies as well. So it's a business strategy from them, right? Yeah. So, but a lot of the companies don't have reinsurance. And basically okay. what the government wants is to make sure that they're not just, you know, the only ones holding the bag in, in a sense, mm -hmm. uh, or mm -hmm. the only ones responsible and they may not have the reserves needed okay. to continue selling policy. So that's kind of one, one thing, but the biggest thing that the, uh, that happened in December of 2022 was there was a lot of regulations for claims processes, okay? okay? In Florida, basically, the governor said that you have a time limitation to get the policy from submitted, adjusted, and paid out. And okay. unfortunately, insurance companies just didn't like that because there's a lot mm -hmm. of variables to that, right? I mean, they, they could be... Okay. Uh, they may not meet those deadlines. And so they felt like they have to back away a little bit in Florida and say, let's see how it goes since that happened in December. Let's mm -hmm. see how it goes. And for the next year or two, we're going to tighten our, uh, our underwriting guidelines so that we don't expose ourselves more. And then let's see how these things, how these um, new guidelines or new um, insurance um, processes for claims work out for the obviously companies that are insuring here. For example, like American mm -hmm. Integrity, uh, you know, even citizens themselves, those, that became a problem as to why a lot of the bigger companies said, we're not getting into this thing, but we're holding on to a new business. And that in, in market here is because they want to see how these Again, they're not in the business of obviously, you know, wasting or um, having to spend more money during claims because they're mm -hmm. obviously going to have to pay claims. So it is a business um, mm -hmm. situation as far as like the insurance yeah. business is concerned. And because of the changes that they did uh, and, 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 Obviously, it is a good thing for the client because you've heard horror stories about clients having to be, you know, a year without having any funds or any yeah. you know, anything paid out. I mean, that's just terrible. Yeah. So there is reasoning Absolutely. behind what they did in December. Uh, okay. And of course, that led to some of the companies to sort of hold them back. But that's not going to last forever, obviously. Okay. You know, in Florida, the one thing uh, or the, one of the many good things is the expansion that it that is going through, the, all the new builds. That's just great um, property risk for companies. They want to insure those new yeah. homes. So the, yeah. the, the opportunities there for those companies to say, I want a piece of that market share. Right. So to sure. us, from the chair, that's the reason why I feel that in the next year or two, we'll get back to that place where the competitive uh, rate and competitive uh, nature in the insurance will, will come back. OK, so you actually see potentially rates going down because I know like within the past year, a lot of properties, including condominiums, I mean, they saw sometimes 30 to 50 percent increase in their rate and like. That was 
astronomical. Um, you know, unfortunately, in an area where a lot of people can't afford that, and but there's areas that can't. So that's not a normal thing. We shouldn't expect that to happen again. Is what I'm hearing from you. Uh, that's how we feel. That's how we feel from the conversations that we had in the last year. I think we've seen the worst of it, and I think in the last in the next year or two, I think we'll start uh, seeing companies easing into the market again. You know, instead of having five boxes to check off, they'll go to four, they'll go to three, and then they'll open up a little more so that obviously um, the rates get competitive because that's one thing that will happen okay. as well is as soon as we get more companies in, the rates will start, you know, people still want to get that market share and or yeah. certain people with businesses and they will obviously start mm-hmm. competing for those rates and that's a good thing for us. Yeah. I really hope you're right. That would be amazing. I know. I <laughs> Things know. would kind of level out. Um, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of concern from people, and they're just you know they don't want to have a thirty fifty thousand dollar policy on a property that used to you know be fifteen thousand for instance. It's just not an ideal scenario. But um, well, great. Is there anything else you think is important to share with the audience as far as the dynamics of Florida? Things to know. Uh, we'll we'll be having you on more regularly because I'm sure this is a very changing market, just like real estate purchasing. So, but yeah, no, absolutely. I think um, the one thing that I would like to hone in as far as homeowners coverage, I think you know, with homeowners, it, it's different than auto insurance. Auto insurance is, is sort of the um, Everybody has to have a specific or or they have they gotta have auto insurance, but they gotta drive to work. And it's homeowners really is uh, um, a conversation that we want to have with our clients because no, not one home, my home is not the same as my neighbors, your home is not the same as your neighbor. They may seem the same, they may they may be the same model, but each homeowner, um, their property, their structure, their even the, the way that they designed it inside, it's all conversations that we want to have with our clients and that they should be having with their clients so that they get the right coverage. Because the worst thing that we want um, for clients is to go through a process or a claim that's a fire. And when they go and look at the dwelling coverage, which is the main thing, the dwelling is the main thing, which is the property and your personal belongings, um, the underinsured, and then having to settle to just basic material. And then I'm talking about folks yeah. that have, you know, very, spe- you know, beautiful crown molding and, you know, very um, yeah. beautiful features on the house. And they don't realize that if their dwelling is not enough to cover those things, they're going to have to not get those things. So they'll just, you know, the yeah. walls, no crown molding. So we want to have. My, all this to say is we want to have that conversation with our home, with our clients that are buying at home to make sure that they're all those things are taken into account in that coverage because the mm-hmm. first time to find out is obviously during the claim. And obviously yeah. the second main thing with homeowners is your liability coverage. A lot of folks don't know that anything that does not involve the vehicle is considered a primary liability, which falls under your homeowners. So even if you go into a restaurant and you get into a scuffle and you know you push someone and they get hurt, that may go into your homeowner's liability, right? If they would have shot wow. or you know, you know, it's negligence in that sense. And so they tend to, you know, lower liability limits on the homeowner when we obviously don't to make sure that obviously they're properly covered the worst. Wow. So many important components to it. I didn't realize that <laughs> having scuffles in restaurants could actually fall into your, your homeowner's policy. Very yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah, it really is. And that's, I understand fully why you can't just fit out, you know, a number when you're approached with, what do you think this actually could cost? Because it really is about the, the property owner Yep. what their risk is based on past claims, as you mentioned, as well as the property. So it, it is a very holistic approach, it seems, which makes it is. sense. It is. And I think that, unfortunately, fortunately and unfortunately, unfortunately, the what you see on TV 
um, you know, the 15 minutes, the uh, the discounts of this, obviously it's what, you know, the masses obviously are hearing over and over. And in reality, it's in a way it's fortunate because it provides an opportunity for us, the brokers that do want to do a good job and, and have that conversation, a unique conversation, because obviously that provides opportunity for us. Uh, but in reality, yeah. some folks just don't think about all the ins and outs of what their home and their beautiful home that they have that really should be covered. And unfortunately, yeah. they find that at the worst time, which is during a claim. So that is yeah, uh, absolutely. what we want. So let me ask real quick, and then we'll wrap up. What, How reliable is the current homeowner's policy when it comes to having a rough you know, estimate of cost? Like, as we talked about, it is very much a multifaceted um, yep. to really have that figure. So can you really rely on that as a good you know, baseline? So that's a great question. And I think that the more you have what we've seen, the more you have the conversation about detail information mm-hmm. about uh, our clients' home and the quality and the things that they have mm-hmm. uh, will provide us with more information to try to estimate, obviously, to the best of our ability. But we don't just stop there. Our companies will make sure and they'll go out and inspect the home to make sure that, obviously, is not one, overinsure, because we don't want to be overinsured either. You don't want to pay for insurance that you're not yeah. going to. And two, that you're not underinsured. So there is a uh, sort of a safety net uh, mm-hmm. in regards of how we estimate, uh, you know, replacement okay. costs uh, by what we do. And then obviously the carrier sends out uh, an inspector or adjuster. And most of the times it's just exterior, mm-hmm. dependent on the size of the home, dependent on the quality of the home. It may require an interior, which we sometimes are mm-hmm. part of as well, so that the client feels like it's not just, you know, um, someone from a, a company coming out there. Uh, but that allows us to really, really um, make sure that that coverage is where it should be. Now, having said that, in the last three, four years, we have seen that because of inflation prices in materials, that that number has needed to be increased more often than before. So if yeah. you had if you had a million dollars in dwelling coverage last year. It might be 1.2, 1.3 now because the quality of your home, right? The same thing we talked about a year ago, just it stands today. But now today, that crown molding is actually going to cost you, you know, two dollars mm-hmm. more per square foot, and it's just the way it is. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we want to make sure that your policy is um, updated properly. You know, yeah. As far as in, additions, renovations, things like that. So, but we have seen on a more often basis, year, yearly basis, where we need to have these conversations because of inflation coverage. Understood. Okay. That's very, very helpful. Well, this has been an amazing conversation. I so appreciate all of your insight. I look forward to future conversations that we'll have. And as the uh, dynamics continue to change, we hope to stay and keep everybody else updated. So thank you um, so much for being on it. And for those that um, are interested in learning mo- more about Omar or having a consultation with him, we'll have his contact information below. Thank you so much for tuning in.